Hello everyone, this is Daryl Guberman, CEO of Guberman PMC LLC, quality consulting firm here in Connecticut. Um, as you all know, I was uh, supporting Sam Salipar, the whistleblower, on April 17, 2024, down in Washington, D.C. Um, I have to say this, uh, Boeing is, you know, I don't even know what to say about Boeing, but this video today is about uh, Collins Aerospace, the manufacturer of the MCAS system. Uh, that's what they uh, alluded to in a lot of documentation, not defining it, but it appears that Collins, and it's a 50-50 business uh, transaction with Collins uh, Aerospace, Boeing gets their avionic systems, and so does uh, Airbus. Um, I want to tell you, uh, we have uh, uh, Richard Blumenthal in the wings here. Mr. Richard Blumenthal, there he is. Yes, and he is a subcommittee uh, chairman for the Department of Homeland Security, who sits on ANSI ANAB's board, which is the accreditation body for Boeing. You cannot make this up. So his committee, which is tied to the Department of Homeland Security, pays a fee to ANSI ANAB, and ANSI ANAB are Boeing's, <laughs> Boeing's accreditation body. So you think anything's going to get done? Richard, wake up for God's sake, man. Unbelievable. But anyway, I want to tell Richard this. Richard, one last thing before you trot out of here and go to the next meeting and the next meeting and the next meeting. And you know what? I, after watching them in Washington, D.C. on April 17th and also um, also going back down there on June 18th to watch David Calhoun, the CEO of uh, the former CEO going to be in December, a uh, Boeing uh, get inquisition. Uh, the only thing he had apparently he knows is that... Uh, is $32 million in pay. I think he's going to get $45 million. That's like a severance deal. Uh, I think he's made enough money between 2009 and present. He should not get any money whatsoever. And don't put more nails in the coffin of the poor Ethiopian and Indonesian uh, uh, families. You know, I still remember that woman that was yelling at David Calhoun, you killed my daughter, you killed my family, you killed my daughter. I say it time and time again because that's stuck in my mind. Okay, and you have Richard Blumenthal run from one meeting to the next meeting to the next meeting, and he can't even get, and any of these people who are on the committee cannot get shit done because they're so bogged down with different meetings. You got to go back to the Congress, Senate, whatever. I got to go to another meeting. Let me tell you something. I don't care what they're paying them. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't do that. You got to be kidding me. You know, you, you got to, you, you, you're a human mind cannot handle the stresses and strains go one one meeting, one meeting, another meeting, another meeting. I don't even think these people sleep. But we want to bring uh, Robert Kelly over, the new CEO of Boeing in here. And I want to tell you something. You see this guy, Richard? You see him? I want to tell you this, Richard. And this is going to be your fact. You see him? Look at him good. Because within a year or two, he's going to be standing in front of your Senate subcommittee because of another plane going down. Because what it appears to me is that they perpetuate in the aerospace industry, they perpetuate people who really don't roll up their sleeves. I listen to Jim Cramer, the guy from Mad Money. Oh, he's a guy that's going to roll up his sleeves. He's going to roll up his sleeves. Let me tell you something. The bottom line is this. I always believe the new management style, a new CEO for the 21st century has to be a man who's demonstrative enough, uh, not a penny, uh, nickel, dime counter, but he has to know the product in which he is in. O uh, Otbert, or uh, there he is. Ortberg, yes, avionic systems. Possibly knows the aircraft. But you have to be really hands-on. It appears the only hands-on he was, was during the time when um, Mr. Clayton, the other CEO of Collins, was probably the formulator of the MCAS system. And the MCAS system, with many um, avionic systems, electronic systems, uh, you can put them through any type of test, but it's not until it really reaches out there in the, uh, uh, you know, in the actual environment where you can actually find out if you're going to have a failure or not. And um, it's absolutely terrible. They pick the same and perpetual, and I'm going to say this again to Richard Blumenthal and uh, Mr. Uh, Kelly uh, Ortberg. I'm going to say this. Oh, Mr. Ortberg, you're going to be back uh, because you need people who are demonstrative enough. You had over 200 vice presidents 
on all these different programs, 737, 780, 777, that they never reported in pairs back to David um, Calhoun, back to Dennis Mullenberg. They sit there. You know what they do? They sit there. They collect their money, drink their champagne, go on the golf outing, and that's it. So a guy like this, the new CEO, he's a punching bag. Do you remember those clowns that had the sand in the bottom? And you punch them, and they come back up, punch them, come back. Well, it looked like David Calhoun got punching him, but it just stayed down on the ground. Dennis uh, Mullenberg, the same thing. And it starts out with Jim McNerney, who was the originator of the 737 MAX program. Those three people, more than anything, McNerney is the one responsible. But the problem is, is with Dennis Mullenberg and David Calhoun, I feel bad for them because you have all these uh, senior managers who are not telling, who are not pushing it up the line. That's what I mean. When you have a person, a CEO, you should have some sort of um, cognitive ability that you're going to understand and know what the product is rather than look at it as a unit of measure, a unit of price, a unit, this is a dollar sign, let's get it out the door. You should know the function from the, I'm not saying know the entire aircraft, but you should have some sense about it. And it appears that Dennis Mullenberg then, it appears that um, David Calhoun didn't, but they're full guys. He's in the avionics uh, department, Mr. Ortberg, uh, the new CEO. And uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Blumenthal, his organization sits on the board of ANSI ANAP. So does the DOJ, so does the FAA, FDA, CDC, NIH, FBI, FTC, uh, <laughs> DOD. They all sit on ANSI ANAB's board. And because of the closeness that the government and private uh, enterprise has, we will never stop quality issues from accruing. And what ANSI, why is these government agencies, why are they protecting ANSI ANAB? That is what I'd like to know. Why are they protecting ANSI ANAB? This is the thing that I have to ask because I'm going to say this to the India, Ethiopian and Indonesian airline families and also Alaska Air and anybody else who's had issues on Boeing or any aircraft. The lawyer has to go after ANSI ANAP because they are underwriters for the International Accreditation Forum, which is incorporated in Delaware, which ANSI founded. And ANAB was an affiliate at the time. Now they're together since 2018. So ANSI ANAB are responsible for any systematic or any product failure. I keep on repeating this over and over and over again, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to leave it here. My telephone number is 203-556-1493 or Daryl, TQRS at Yahoo.com. Uh, Richard, you will be back uh, in the saddle again, as they say. And uh, when Mr. Ortberg, probably in a year or two, will get uh, hit because of a failure on the aircraft. And um, that's the way it is. I see it downstream because now this is number third CEO who's got the same kind of background as the other two, uh, David Calhoun and also uh, Dennis uh, Mullenberg. But this guy, Ortberg, uh, who knows? I looked at his background. It's the same old, same old. Again, I look forward to hearing from you, and I appreciate your input. Have a great day.